We have new developments tonight in the Chappaqua High School teacher student sex scandal, and we covered it last night and have in this program repeatedly over the last month. Now, it's all centered on this man, a former drama teacher, Christopher Schroffnagel, who is awaiting a judge's decision on a plea deal following a lurid set of allegations. Among those allegations is that he, Schroffnagel, engaged in a five-year sexual relationship with a male student, again, that began when the student was a minor, that he had and coerced students into oral sex with him and other students, again, as young as 14 and 15, and that he provided drugs to some of those same students and got drunk and high with those students, and that he asked students to take and send him photos of their genitals and much more. Now, as we told you last night, the parents of the victims are now suing the school district in federal court here, and the Board of Education was fighting back in what feels like, and I've said it before to this program, some of the most tone-deaf statements I, I remember ever hearing in anything resembling this kind of a case. Some of the statements or that they've made include trying to out the names of parents filing the suit here with rationales for uh, what they describe as something to me bordering on the bazaar. Well, today... The judge ruled against the district, determining that the names will, in fact, remain anonymous. But there's more. Local newspaper, Journal News, they have obtained an email string on the suit that um, bounced between members of the Chapco School Board, showing just what members think of the parents involved in the suit. And it's not just a single member of somebody else. Basically, it represented almost the entirety of the board. Board President Allison Gardner writing, some very sick dogs are barking. Again, they're talking about the parents of the children that were abused, that even Schroffnagel acknowledged they were abused. So nobody's debating at this point that the kids were victims. So again, school board can calling the parents of the victims sick dogs. And they go on to say, or she does, I say, let them yip themselves into a frenzy. Here's what trustee Jeffrey Mester said, showing some contrition writing, appearing to blame the victim was a PR mistake and not something any of us think is the case, would have said on our own or in any other way, I believe. I think that that's been the catalyst for the recent fallout and ill will. But the board president continued, what we are seeing is a feeding frenzy of bitter and unhinged individuals, again, talking about the parents, and it's a tiny group at that. This is going to get worse before it gets better. And for more, we turn once again to attorney David Engelscher. David is with the law office of William A. Galena. He's representing the families of four of the students in their lawsuit right now. And, um, and welcome back to the program, David. I, I didn't think we'd have an advance from yesterday to today, but obviously the string of emails do. One point I left out was not only did the school board want the names of the parents released, and everybody can figure out that then would then say who the kids are if you give the parents names, but also they blame the kids, um, saying that their reckless behavior contributed to this. Am I right? Absolutely. And that's what gave this story traction, Richard. There is no way that you can blame kids for this. But let's go back for a second. The anonymity of the parent, there's no reason for the school to say, we need to publicly identify who these parents are. They know. I've told them. They know. So there's no reason for them to bring this out into the world other than to add another layer of shame, to add another layer of drama, and to maybe deter them from, from bringing these cases. So the judge saw right through that, and the judge says, absolutely not, no way. Because you have to show a reason why, and of course they didn't. They just said, it's not a right, but you know what? In this case, it is. Okay, the board. Um, this is the point, and obviously uh, we're, this isn't going to exactly be a contentious conversation. We're on the same page here, but objectively, and these two guys would probably be good because they haven't been in, involved in the conversations. Who in their right mind would say, with these facts that you know, all right, a teacher that we, the school district, employed that reportedly we were warned about as far as five years back, uh, for improper behavior and, and more. Um, we continue to employ this guy, but because there were four kids that you're representing and more now that are coming out that were abused as 14 and 15 year olds by any definition that statutory rape what was going on there, that somehow, some way, the parents, I'm gonna quote directly here, 
are bitter and unhinged individuals, very sick dogs, dangerous, angry mob, and out to get us. The board clearly believes they're victims in this. And as we discussed yesterday, they were concerned, as leadership was, about fundraising implications of this, that everybody was told by the pres by, by the you know the head of the superintendent, we've got to keep this thing quiet here because we don't want bad press. This is Chappaqua, we're the number one public school, we can't have this. I don't get board members who by definition are representing the interests of the families in the district, why they're going out of their way to blame the kids. Even from the most cynical standpoint, I don't get that. They have no other defense but to blame the kids. And what we spoke about yesterday was the resolution for this is going to be, we made a mistake, let's resolve it now, let's go back to the drawing board and figure out a way that this doesn't happen again. What these emails have, have shown you is they've stripped away that nice persona that you saw at the Board of Education meeting two times ago where everybody sits there prim and proper, and we are seeing that the board is no different than the bully teacher. And you wonder, you say to yourself, did this teacher become a bully? Because he was a bully too, by the way. Not only a predator, but he was a bully. Because the board, did he take on the personality of the board? And these emails show you that, that this board has that bully mentality. Were you shocked when you saw the emails? Or did you, having covered this, did you think that that fit the MO from the board that you dealt with? It fit the MO from what my mothers were telling me when they tried to get in touch with the board. And again, when, when David's referencing the mothers, he's talking about the moms of those four kids he's representing. Thank you. Sorry. Yes, it, it, it substantiates once again what my moms have been saying. They just can't get through to this board. They can't get any help from this board. And it doesn't surprise me that when there was a complaint in 2011, that nothing was done. And you see it. Maybe to the outside world, they're coming out, Richard, and saying, oh, yes, we're going to try and straighten it out. But the reality is, from these emails, you can see they are not taking mm. this seriously. We uh, talked last night. Uh, there's a, a long piece in New York Magazine. If uh, some of you in the audience haven't seen it, I recommend you read it. It really paints a, a fuller picture um, uh, with some context of the different players in the environment that is Chappaqua. And again, Chappaqua in some um, books is rated the number one public high school in America, uh, turning out amazing students and uh, going to amazing colleges. But one of the things that came out of that I'm curious is it wasn't just the board. There were elements within the city, or within the town, that support the teacher still, um, that in some ways blame the kids, uh, and saying you're bringing shame to the town here, to the hamlet of Chappaqua, and that you gotta keep quiet and they'll go to the parents. What have the parents said to you in terms of, because it is a small community and people know who the names are even if they haven't been released, have they gotten pressures? Have they gotten threats? Have they gotten uh, strong-armed by not just the board here, but by the community in some cases? The answer is yes. They do get a lot of support, just like I get support. People now know who I am, and they walk up to me, and they say, you're fighting a good fight. Um, but they do get, what are you doing this for? This is ruining our school. This is hurting our school district. The short-sightedness of that statement is what's hurting the school district and hurting people is the failure of the school district to rectify this problem. It's been over a year since this teacher retired and you haven't heard one thing from the school district to avoid this from happening again in the future. And just one point I want to jump in. For people who don't know, the reason why the teacher resigned or retired or whatever you want to call it is one of his victims um, who uh, had been um, basically molested and it, they had kept up a five-year relationship, went with another one of the theater uh, students to the teacher and said, either you resign immediately um, or I'm going to the board and they're going to force you out. Only then did he resign. But in, anyway, Andrew, you wanted to make just, point. The, the emails that came out today, they certainly show the mindset of the board members in reacting to these suits and these complaints. Is th are these going to be part of your case? And if so, what, if so, what do they establish? Is that because clearly the suit is against the district, but do the emails prove that the, the district was somehow more culpable, more liable, or does it just show the attitude that they had? Well, attitude is a big thing, and also credibility is always an issue. So, if 
the persona that the school board is giving during their board of education meetings that are on videotape is we care and we're concerned, like you heard Allison Gardner say. Um, and then you see these emails, credibility goes out the window. So that is always going to be important in any case and in any trial. These mm -hmm. emails today were bad news David, for Chappaqua. You still haven't heard from the board? They I still haven't asked you to sit down? They can call me anytime. Okay, well, we'll continue to follow it. David, thank you very thank much. You, Andrew, Dominic, thank you as well here. And Dom, you stay with me because up next, um, he's often mentioned as a possible primary challenger against Bill de Blasio in next year's race for New York City mayor. But will Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz actually get into the race while well, he sat down one-on-one -on -one with Dominic and he answered that question? See what's.